Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Recipes and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you for being a part of this fabulous online community that we are building. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate your support. Today, we're here to talk about some new book releases that are coming out in November. So first, really quick, I'm playing a little bit with lighting today. Since my ring light broke, I've kind of been trying some different things. And today I actually have the blinds on my window open. The blinds are right there. And I typically have them closed so that I can better control the lighting because I cannot control what the sun does. But I feel like my past couple of videos have been pretty dark. So I wanted to see if maybe having the window open a little bit will help it. So we're going to see what I can do. But anyway, as I mentioned, today we are here to talk about some of the new book releases that are coming out in November. Now, as a reminder, in an effort to prevent overlapping content, I am no longer going to be discussing in this video any of the books that I talked about in my recent November book of the month prediction video. All of the books that I talked about in that video are new November releases as well. The main difference between this video and that video are the criteria that I use to select the books that I speak about. Obviously my book of the month prediction video are going to feature books that I think have a very high probability of being selected by book of the month for the upcoming month. Whereas these new release videos are purely books that I'm interested in or that are on my radar or that I think you would like to have on your radar. There are plenty of books in the book of the month prediction video that I have absolutely no interest in reading and so they would have never been featured in my new release videos. So if you are watching both of them you're going to get a pretty solid idea of what is coming out in the month of November. Without further ado we are going to go ahead and jump in with the first Tuesday in November which is actually November 7th and I know that we have a very beloved prequel book coming out called Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel novel to Legends and Lattes which has kind of taken the online bookish community by storm from what I understand. It is a very cozy fan and I know that a lot of people who have read it really loved it. I have not read it. It's not something that I'm personally very interested in, but I wanted to go ahead and mention the prequel here just in case you were interested. I'm just going to read this little blurb really quick. When an injury throws a young battle-hungry orc off her chosen path, she may find that what we need isn't always what we see. In Bookshops and Bone Dust, a prequel to Legends and Lattes, New York Times bestselling author Travis Baldry takes us on a journey of high fantasy, first loves, and secondhand books. So I just know that if you love Legends and Lattes, I've heard a lot of great things about this one as well from people who have received arcs of the book and I know that you're probably going to want to get your hands on this one and like I said it comes out on the 7th and I just realized that I forgot to put on lipstick so I'm going to be looking ghostly in this video awesome another very highly anticipated sequel that is coming out on November 7th is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros I don't think I really have to tell you that fourth wing I feel kind of broke the internet everybody seems to really really love that book I don't think I've heard much terrible things about it now of course I am personally not one to go along with the hype so I'm kind of waiting until it all dies down before I pick it up myself but I have ordered a couple special editions of it so I I really hope that I love it but it does definitely seem like it's going to be something up my alley but we're going to see. I'm not going to read anything about the synopsis of Iron Flame because I do not want to risk any spoilers whatsoever. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware. I'm sure that you are because I know that a lot of people who have read Fourth Wing have been dying to get their hands on Iron Flame but just in case you weren't this sequel is coming out on the 7th. Now typically I don't mention YA releases in my videos just because I personally am not really reading YA anymore so I don't gravitate towards those books but Ellie Hazelwood is actually making her YA debut with a novel coming out on the 7th called Check Plus Mate. It says Mallory Greenleaf is done with chess. Every move counts nowadays. After the sport led to the destruction of her family four years earlier, Mallory's focus is on her mom, her sisters, and the dead-end job that keeps the lights on. That is, until she begrudgingly agrees to play in one last charity tournament and inadvertently wipes the board with notorious king killer Nolan Sawyer, current world champion and reigning bad boy of chess. Nolan's loss to an unknown rookie shocks everyone. What's even more confusing? His desire to cross pawns again. What kind of gambit is Nolan playing? The smart move would be to walk away, but Mallory's victory opens the door to sorely needed cash prizes, and despite everything, she can't help feeling drawn to the enigmatic strategist. As she rockets up the ranks, Mallory struggles to keep her family safely separated from the game that wrecked it in the first place, and as her love for the sport she so desperately wanted to hate begins to rekindle, Mallory quickly realizes that the games aren't only on the board, and the competition can be fiercely attractive and intelligent and infuriating. So that actually sounds pretty wonderful. I know that this is going to have Allie Hazelwood's trademark banter, clever writing, very intelligent so this does absolutely sound adorable and cute and like I said I wanted to go ahead and mention it here for all of the Allie Hazelwood fans. Also on the 7th we have a book coming out that sounds like it's kind of going to be a little bit noir-ish. It's called Last Night at the Hollywood Canteen by Sarah James and the premise of this one really caught my attention so I wanted to go ahead and talk to you about it. It says perhaps the best place in 1943 Hollywood to see the stars is the Hollywood Canteen, a club for servicemen staffed exclusively by those in show business. Murder mystery playwright Annie Lawrence, new in 
town after a devastating breakup definitely hopes to rub elbows with the right stars. Maybe then she can get her movie made. But Hollywood proves to be more than tinsel and glamour. When despised film critic Fiona Ferris is found dead in the canteen kitchen, Annie realizes that any one of the canteen's luminous volunteers could be guilty of the crime. To catch the killer, Annie falls in with Fiona's friends, a bitter and cynical group that call themselves the Ambassadors Club, each as uniquely unhappy in their life and career as Annie is in hers. Solving a murder in real life, it turns out, is a lot harder than writing one for the stage. And by involving herself in the secrets and lies of the Ambassadors Club, Annie just might have put a target on her own back. So that actually really, really intrigues me. I love the noir vibes that I'm getting from it. It is set in 1943, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the war that I can see so far. I just think that's going to be very atmospheric. So this is a notable one that I have on my radar for the seventh. Also on the seventh, we have the start of a new series from beloved romance author Katie Roberts. It is called Hunt on Dark Waters. I know that she writes the Neon Gods series, which I've heard a lot of fantastic things about. And like I said, this is the start of a new series. Evelyn is a witch with a perfect storm of impulses terrible taste in bed partners, sticky fingers, and a lust for danger. After she steals from her vampire ex and falls through a portal to another realm, she's fished out of the waters by a band of seafarers and their telekinetic captain. She's immediately given a choice, join their group or die. Bowen has no memory of his life before he became one of the, oh my gosh, I cannot pronounce the name of the ship. I'm not going to try. He and his pirate crew are bound by vow to patrol through thresholds, the magical sea in between realms, keeping the portals to other worlds safe. When he rescues Evelyn, he doesn't expect to be attracted to the unflappably brassy pickpocket. The longer he's Spence in her presence, the more she begins to question if his heart is the next thing she'll steal. But as tensions heat up between Bowen and Evelyn, danger escalates as well, because Evelyn has no intention of keeping her vows, and if she betrays the crew, both she and Bowen will pay the ultimate price. It sounds like it's just going to be a really interesting blend of genres in this one, and I wanted to mention it here for those who are fans of Katie Robert. Like I said, that one comes out on the 7th. Also on the 7th, we have a thriller called The Engagement Party by Finley Turner. I believe that this is a debut novel. It says, an engagement party turns deadly in this debut thriller in the tradition of Sarah Pinborough and Ruth Ware. Color me intrigued. Cass Baptiste is newly engaged to her fiancé Murray Sedgemont after a whirlwind romance. Before they even get to share the news, an invitation arrives via messenger to an engagement party hosted by Murray's parents. When Cass and Murray arrive at the Sedgemont estate, she is astonished to learn that Murray's family is one of the most powerful families in North Carolina. As Cass's future mother-in-law, Beatrice, whips herself into a frenzy over the perfect party for her state's elite, Cass begins to receive anonymous threatening social media messages. On the night of the event, as champagne is popped and the celebrations begin, a body is found in the lavish home. All eyes are on Cass, the interloper amongst the rich and powerful guests. Over the course of the party, Cass's dark past unexpectedly becomes intertwined with the murder, and in order to prove her innocence, she must finally come to terms with her secret. As Murray's family secrets are revealed, Cass must prove herself innocent while awaiting the anonymous threats that haunt her every move. So that premise actually sounds a little bit interesting. That is one that is definitely on my radar for sure, and I wanted to go ahead and make sure it was on yours as well. The last one that I want to talk to you about for the seventh is called The Beautiful and the Wild by Peggy Townsend, and what I really loved about this is that this is actually a survival story set in Alaska. And you all know that I love books set in Alaska, especially like isolation thrillers or survival stories. So this sounds like it might be right up my alley. The dangers of Alaska aren't limited to storms, starvation, and grizzly bears. Sometimes the most dangerous thing is the person you love. It's summer in Alaska and the light surrounding the shipping container turned storage shed where Liv Russo is being held prisoner is fuzzy and gray. Around her is thick forest and jagged mountain. In front of her across a clearing is a low slung cabin with a single window that spills a wash of yellow light onto bare ground. Illuminated in that light is the father of her child, a man she once loved, a man who is now her jailer. Liv vows to do anything to escape. Carrying her own secrets and a fierce need to protect her young son, Liv must navigate a new world where extreme weather, starvation, and dangerous wildlife are not the only threats she faces. With winter's arrival imminent, she knows she must reckon with her past and the choices that brought her to the unforgiving Alaskan landscape if she is ever going to make it out alive. A story of survival in the wilds of Alaska, The Beautiful and the Wild, explores the questions of whether we can truly ever know the person we love for ourselves. That absolutely sounds phenomenal. I'm getting some hints of The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, but I actually think that this is going to lean more towards thriller than like literary fiction, and I'm here for it. This is certainly one that I will be picking up at some point because it sounds exactly like something I would love to read. Moving on into the 14th, we actually have what is supposed to be a dark academia book called The Favorites by Rosemary Hennigan. Most students would kill to be accepted into the prestigious law and literature cohort at Franklin University, but for Jesse Mooney, enrollment in the course is about more than elite campus status, rigorous thought, and professional connections. It's her chance to get close to charismatic professor Jay Crane and take him down. From the moment she discovered their secret relationship, Jessie's been convinced Crane is to blame for the events leading to her sister's death. Still haunted by their last email exchange, she'll cross any line to hold them accountable. But when Jessie finally earns Crane's trust and the coveted position as one of his favorites, attracting the other students' envy and suspicion, the truth becomes darkly twisted. Is it justice Jessie craves or revenge? And what does she stand to lose if she gets in her way? Shimmering with tension, this provocative novel explores the nature of obsession, the inequities of power, and the ways that anger, desire, and love reveal the best 
best and worst of us. So again, I'm loving the vibes that I'm getting from this one. And this is certainly one that I will be picking up. I've been looking for some great dark academia and I'm really hoping that this is it, especially with that revenge plot. Next, we have a new historical fiction coming out from Ariel Lahan. She, I know, is a very popular historical fiction author. I personally have not read anything by her, but this new one sounds pretty interesting. It is called The Frozen River. Maine, 1789. The Kennebec River freezes, entombing a man in the ice. Martha Ballard is summoned to examine the body and determine cause of death. As the local midwife and healer, Martha is good at keeping secrets. Her diary is a record of every birth and death, every murder and debacle that unfolds in the town of Hallowell. In that diary, she also documented the details of an alleged rape that occurred four months earlier. Now, one of the men accused of that heinous attack has been found dead in the ice. While Martha is certain she knows what happened the night of the assault, she suspects that the two crimes are linked and that there is more to both cases than meets the eye. Over the course of one long, hard winter, as the trial nears and whispers and prejudices mount, Martha's diary lands at the center of the scandal and threatens to tear both her family and her community apart. In her newest offering, Ariel Lahan brings to life a brave and compassionate unsung heroine who refused to accept anything less than justice on behalf of those no one else would protect. The Frozen River is a thrilling, tense, and tender story of a remarkable woman who had the courage to take a stand and in the process wrote herself into American history. Oh, I just absolutely love the sound of that. We have a very strong woman who is standing up for justice and it sounds like it's going to be a very harrowing time. Like I said, I've never read anything by Ariel Lahan, but this might be the one that introduces me to that author because I just love the sound of this. And again, it's in an earlier time period. It's in the late 1700s rather than the 1800s or the 1900s. So I think it will be really interesting to see how this plays out. I know nothing of this person's story. It is based on a true story and I would be really intrigued to see where this goes. So this is certainly one that is on my radar. A thriller that is coming out on the 14th is called The Professor by Lauren Nossett. On a spring afternoon in Athens, Georgia, Ethan Haddock is discovered in his apartment dead, apparently by his own hand. His fatality immediately garners media, not because his death reflects the troubling increase of depression and mental health issues among college students, but because the media has caught the whiff of a scandal. His professor, Dr. Verena Sobek, has been taken in for questioning and there are rumors his death is the result of a bad romance. A Title IX investigation is opened, the professor is suspended, and social media crusaders and trolls alike are out for blood. Marlet Kaplan never investigated love affairs. A former detective turned research assistant, she misses the excitement of her old job, but most of all the friendship of her partner, Teddy. When her mother, a professor at the university and colleague of the accused professor, asks for her help, she finds herself in the impossible position of proving something didn't happen. Without the credentials to interview suspects or access phone records, she will have to get closer to a victim's life than ever before, and she quickly finds herself in his apartment having dinner with his roommates, even sleeping in his bed. But is she too close to see the truth? In her relentless pursuit to uncover the mystery behind Ethan's death, Martha will be forced to confront the power structures ingrained in the classroom against the backdrop of a historic campus and an institution that sometimes fails its most vulnerable members. This sounds fascinating as well. This is another one that I think that I'm going to be adding to my TBR because I kind of want to see what went down. If the professor is guilty or not, what actually happened to Ethan? Did he kill himself? Was he murdered? I have no idea, but we're going to find out once we read this book when it comes out on the 14th. And the final one I want to talk to you about today that comes out on the 14th is another thriller. It is called Good Girls Don't Die by Christina Henry. Now, I am somewhat familiar with this author because I do believe that she kind of writes fairy tale ish retellings. Like, I know that she did a retelling of Alice in Wonderland and things like that. I've never actually read anything by her, but I have heard good things. I don't know if she's ever written a thriller before, but we're going to see what this is about. Celia wakes up in a house that's supposed to be hers. There's a little girl who claims to be her daughter and a man who claims to be her husband, but Celia knows this family and this life is not hers. Allie is supposed to be on a fun weekend trip, but then her friend's boyfriend unexpectedly invites the group to a remote cabin in the woods. No one else believes Allie, but she is sure that something about this trip is very, very wrong. Maggie just wants to be home with her daughter, but she's in a dangerous situation and she doesn't know who put her there or why. She'll have to fight with everything she has to survive. Three women, three stories, only one way out. This captivating novel will keep readers guessing until the very end. So that's actually very, very vague, but obviously we are following three women and I'm sure that we are going to find out how they all connect to one another. And that's just intriguing enough for me to want to pick it up. In fact, because there's not enough information in here, I actually want to know more about what's happening. So if you are a fan of Christina Henry, if you have read any of her previous works and this one sounds good to you, be on the lookout for this on November 14th. Oop, I actually have one more book that is coming out on the 14th. It is actually the newest romance by Alexa Martin. It is called Next Door Nemesis. After years of hustling, Collins Carter has finally made it back to her parents' house. Between tending to the compost with her newly retired dad and running into her high school nemesis at the only decent coffee shop in town, Collins realizes the subdivision from hell she swore she'd never return to is her rock bottom. Then the homeowners association complaint arrived. Nathaniel Adams always dreamed of a nice quiet life in his suburban hometown, or at least that's what he thought until Collins moved back and sent his quaint organized life into a tailspin. He thought Collins was infuriating 10 years ago, but when she announces she's running against him for HOA president, all bets are off. From secret board meetings to vicious smear campaigns whispered over backyard fences, Collins and Nate sink to levels their sleepy suburb have never seen before. But as hate turns into lust, these two enemies are forced to reckon with the feelings they've ignored for years. If only there were bylaws for real life. That just sounds like a cute, sweet, fun, hate to love romance by Alexa Martin. She's 
a romance author that I've actually never read from before, but I know that she is pretty well loved. And so this is certainly one to keep an eye out if you are a fan of hers. And then the final book that I'm going to talk to you about today in this video is a release that comes out on the 28th. It is called The Fiction Writer by Jillian Cantor. The once rising literary star Olivia Fitzgerald is down on her luck. Her most recent novel, a retelling of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, was a flop. Her boyfriend of nine years just dumped her and she's battling a bad case of writer's block. So when her agent calls her with a high paying ghostwriting opportunity, Olivia is all too willing to sign the NDA. At first, the right for hire job seems too good to be true. All she has to do is interview Henry Ash Asherwood, a reclusive mega billionaire, twice named people's sexiest man alive, who wants her help in writing a book that reveals a shocking secret about his late grandmother and Daphne du Maurier. But when Olivia arrives at his Malibu estate, nothing is as it seems. The more Olivia digs into his grandmother's past, the more questions she has. And before she knows it, she's trapped in a gothic mystery of her own. Oh, gothic is certainly a buzzword for me. With as many twists and turns as the California coast, the fiction writer is a page turner that explores the boundaries of creative freedom and whose stories we have the right to tell. Count me in y'all. That sounds absolutely fantastic. I am certainly here for it. I mentioned in that book of the month prediction video that there were a ton of really great sounding thrillers coming out in November, which is what I wanted for October. So I'm actually really excited to see all of these great thrillers, but I had a hard time narrowing down the thrillers that I actually wanted to put in that book of the month prediction video. So this is a great month to be a thriller lover. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all of the November releases that I wanted to talk with you today. And of course, please feel free to put in the comments below some of the November releases that you are interested in reading. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but want to let me know that you're here, go ahead and leave me some type of academia emoji, maybe like a pencil or an apple or a graduation cap in honor of the school themed books that we have coming out in November. I always love seeing your comments, even if they are just the emojis. I love interacting with you and it helps my channel so, so much. And as always, y'all, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, typically two, depending on what I can do. And I would sure love to connect with you in those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with all of the books that I've discussed in this video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.